Hi, so on the SAT, you usually see a problem or two that involves exponential growth and decay. So let's take a closer look and see some examples of how we can solve problems involving exponential growth and decay. So for the SAT, you'll need to know the shape of the graphs of exponential growth and decay. But then you'll also need to know how to really use the formulas, what goes into the formulas, and how you would take pieces of information and transform them to put them into these formulas correctly. I've picked out five different problems from the official practice test for the SATs that we can go over and show you how to solve these uh, using these equations for exponential growth and decay. So let's take a look at the graphs and the equations. If you want some more information on this, I've got a full video on this that goes into some more details that you could watch. Otherwise, really all you need to know is the basic shape and then how this equation is populated. So the basic shape of an exponential growth starts at the starting point here and then it goes up, first starts going up slowly and then the it increases increases as we go on and it ends up being this shape here. For exponential decay, we have a starting point right here at our y-intercept and it decreases at a fast rate and then it slows down the amount that it decreases and approaches zero. So what do you put in the equation? So in the equation, this A is your starting point. So that's always where you're starting. In this graph it would be the starting point right here. And then it's 1 plus R. So if we are increasing, say we have an increase of 20%. First of all, we need to make the 20% into 0.2. But in here, we're adding it to 1, 1 1.2, because we need a number bigger than 1 to have exponential growth. So the number that we get in here, we're adding 1 to the rate that we're increasing by. And then we're just in doing it an X number of times. So if it's over five times like this graph here, then this would be five. So this is the number of times, um, the number of periods that it's happening. And then exponential decay, same thing. We have a starting point, but here we go one minus the rate. So again, in our example of decreasing by 20% or 0.2, we'd go one minus 0.2 and we would use 0.8 in here. Another way to look at that is th if we're decreasing by 20%, we have 80% left after each time that we do that decrease. But again, we need to have here the amount that we're left with. It's always gonna be for exponential decay, this value in here is gonna be less than one, but it's not gonna be the amount that we're decreasing by is one minus that or the amount that we have left. And then again, x is the number of times that you're doing it. So let's take a look at this first equation. So Keith modeled the growth over several hundred years of tree population by estimating the number of trees, pollen grains per square centimeter that were deposited each year within layers of lake sediment. He estimated that there were 310 pollen grains, so that's our starting point. 1% annual increase. That tells us right there that it's exponential growth. It's happening each year and by 1%. And then we don't know the number of years, so we're doing T. And on most SAT problems, they're not even looking for an answer. They're just looking for you to set up the equation. They're giving you examples for the equation. So our starting point in our equation, y equals a times 1 plus r to the x is 310. Well, all the equations have 310 here. It's the next part that changes. So 1 plus r. So what is that going to look like? So if it's a 1% increase, that's 0.01. But in here, we're going to do 1 plus 0 0.01 or 1.01. .01. And we don't know how many years we're doing it for. We just have a variable that we're doing it for t years. So we would end up like this, which is choice D. And notice C, that would be if you did exponential decay, 
right? So that would be if you took one minus that. So quickly, you can always quickly look. This number here, if it's greater than one, it's exponential growth. If it's less than one, it's exponential decay. So we could have canceled that right out there. But either way, D is our answer for this one. Okay, here we have a population one. So world population has grown at an average rate of 1.9% per year. Again, that's right there. It tells us where it's an exponential growth. The starting point is 4 billion, and it asks you to, to do it in billions. All right, and then T, again, is an unknown. It's just for T years. So let's just set up the equation. The starting point is going to be 4 it's because we want it in billions, so it's just going to be 4. Now we've got to go 1 plus the rate. So the rate is 1.9, which is expressed as a decimal, 1.9% as a decimal is 0 0.019. Then we add 1 to it, and we're going to get 1.019. And then we're doing that for an unknown amount of years, but it tells us that we should use T. And that gets us choice A as our answer for this one. Okay, so in this problem, they start you out with an equation that has to do with M, the number of members of a gym. T is the number of years after it opens. So if you wanted to analyze this, you'd say, oh, it well, it started with 1,800, and then each year, it looks like it increased by 2%. So they're saying, that's for a year. What if we wanted to do it by quarter? What if it was Q quarters after the gym opens? Well, all we need to use is use this same equation, but convert quarters to years. So like if we had 12 quarters, for example, that would be three years. All we need to do is take the quarters and divide by four to get years. So all we need to do is replace t, which is the number of years, by quarters divided by 4. And you get answer A. Okay. Here in planning maintenance for a city's infrastructure, a civil engineer estimates that starting from the present, the population of the city will decrease by 10% every 20 years. So decrease by 10% every 20 years. That tells us it's going to be exponential decay. The present population is 50,000, so that's our starting point. And then this is the tricky part of this one, is that it's that's for every 20 years. So let's set up the equation for um, exponential decay. So A times 1 minus R to the X. So our A is going to be 50,000, which shows up in every equation. Now the rate here, it's 10% decrease, 10% decrease, or 90% that we're going to have. Or another way to look at that is 1 minus 0.1, which is 0.9. So that's where we're going to use 0.9 in here. So that gets rid of these two choices, because we're using 0.9. That's how much we have left each time, 1 minus the 10%. And then what do we do with x? So it's every 20 years. Um, so say we had 40 years. That's going to only decrease by 10% two times, the first 20 years and the second 20 years. So we've got to take that and divide it by 20. So whatever our number of years is, t, we got to divide it by 20 because this equation that we're working on is for every 20 years. So then we would just take t over 20 for our time period, and d would be our answer for this one. And then sometimes, if you're lucky, they're just looking for the shape of the graph. So the mass of living organisms in the lake is defined to be the biomass of the lake. 
So it doubles each year. That's the key to this. That tells us that it's an exponential growth if it's doubling each year. So then that gives us exponential growth. The graph is going to look like this, the shape of the graph. These two are just linear. That's linear growth. This is no growth at all. And this is some kind of a step function for growth. So the only one that represents doubling each year, the graph would look like this, or choice C. Thanks for watching, and if you have an SAT coming up, good luck. I'm going to continue to add SAT material, so if you'd like to subscribe right up here, you can get notification of when new material comes out, and I've got some more stuff for you to watch right here. Thanks again for watching, and please come back soon.